Hi everyone, today I wanted to ask my husband Rob about the proper way to squat. Okay honey, so everyone wants to squat, everyone squat, wants squat. the booty from the squat. That's right. Um, but I'm seeing people do back squats and it, it, a lot of the ladies that I see do this look like they're about to fall. Right. So they have their load and they're literally trying to squat, but it's like they're like like falling. And so I don't know if A, they have too much load or if mm -hmm. they're doing it proper. I'm not, I'm not sure. Right. It, it's, uh, it's both. Both okay. are the issues. So um, what Angie was showing was more of a hip brake squat versus a knee brake squat. Okay. So what's a hip brake squat? So another way to think about it is a powerlifting squat, which is more of a hip brake squat versus a knee brake squat, which is more of an Olympic style squat. Okay. Show me. Okay. So if we look at Olympics, uh, not Olympic, but powerlifting squat, it's more a wide grip. Sometimes you see guys go like this mm -hmm. that are really big. Um, from the side view, the bar placement's fairly low, so they'll bring the bar as kind low as like, they can. Okay, not on the neck here. And they'll go as wide as they physically can mm -hmm. with their feet. And then they're initiating the squat with a hip break. So there's no knee break, there's hip break. So they're going to try to sit down as far as they can, as far as they can, as far as they can. Then they're going to come down and then they're back up. Now, the difference is with a knee break, your hands are very close and it's a high bar position. Mm -hmm. um, and the stance is typically more narrow and it's a knee break. So instead of hips going back, it's knee break, knee, knee, knee. Like you're sitting. Right now I'm sitting, 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 and then I'm coming back up. So it's not that the hip break or powerlifting squat is bad and the knee break or Olympic style squat is good. It just depends. Like if you're a power lifter, you have to power, you have to hip break squat. It's, you can do more weight because the bar placement's lower, the mass of loads uh, closer center of gravity, you have wide stance, less distance for you to go basically to do absolute loads. But the problem is people are watching YouTube videos, mm -hmm. people going, oh, hip break squat's better because you do this and you get your hamstring glutes involved and everything else. And at that point, then you got to go, well, what's the risk versus reward? And the problem and what you're seeing um, is that people are going really heavy, yeah. especially females, right? They're going mass heavy. Yeah. And they're like, <laughs> they, they're just, they look like they're right. teetering. So they're like this, they're wide. So they may start out okay. So they go like this and then they're dropping down, dropping down. And then as they get to the bottom, because it's so heavy, they're doing that. Yes. They, and then they can't, they can't Right. It up. And if you, you visualize the load is here, right? With the bar and the load is exponentially high right in this area. Mm -hmm. And where do most people injure their disc? L5S1. Low back. Low back or the SI joint, etc. Mm -hmm. So if you're in it for the long term and you really want to keep your spine healthy, there's no reason for you not to back squat. You can hip break squat. Um, but it's I would rather people knee break squat the majority of the time. And you should learn how to hip break squat too. That's always good to learn. Um, but you have to have someone watching you so you know or film yourself so you look at your lumbar spine and go, oh, that was too heavy. Like I shouldn't have done that. That was like crappy form. So it's not one is better than the other, but you're yeah. talking about the longevity of your health. Right. And what's so the, what's the risk versus reward? So I would prefer people perform a front squat or a goblet squat. So why don't you grab a kettlebell? I don't even know what this is. Yeah. Okay, so now we got the load in front, and so Angie's gonna go shoulder width. just shoulder width, mm -hmm. and she has pretty good squat technique as you'll see. So she's gonna bend through the knees first, so knee break, down, and then coming back up. So this way, she's nice and upright, and so the likelihood of her excessively loading this area goes down because she's got such good posture alignment. And I, you know what, the way I think about it is if I'm actually squatting, I literally, and Rob did, did this to me way back when he was teaching me how to do a front squat, he literally took the clipboard and put it underneath my butt. And you said, sit on it. So yeah. literally as I'm loading, I, I think of that little imaginary yeah. seat that I'm sitting on, or you could just use exactly. the air max. And so, yeah, and so the other thing that you could do is literally you can put, like if this is a bigger medicine ball, yeah. I, and this is what think I do a lot of people, is they just it. literally just try to tap as they go down. Now that's pretty low. Most people can't do that, but Angie can do it because her squat pattern is so good.
But I always think of like, there's that imaginary seat that I'm getting to, that I'm about to sit on. Yeah, I, That's exactly. always been like a good accountability thing for me. So yep. I guess the takeaway is if you've been back squatting and it's maybe your form and techniques not so great, maybe switch it up and go to the front and try. You yeah. can do um, a goblet also squat. Do dumbbells, right, too? Yeah, right? you can do a dumbbell um, or, or a kettlebell, whatever that is. Yeah. And that way the load is put in front. And that'll be another option. And obviously with that, you would have to do a knee brake squat. Otherwise, you're going to feel like you're right. dropping the load in front. All right. Yeah. So hopefully you enjoyed this exercise. Hopefully you can help grow the booty from this squat exercise. So until next time. Eat well to feel well.